Walking into the boss's office and saying I quit is something that most people probably dream of. I certainly did, but when it came to leaving my secure full-time teaching job with a decent salary and good benefits, I didn't go out in quite such a blaze of glory. Instead, I carefully calculated my way to feeling financially secure enough to make the jump. So if you're in that position or want to be in the next one to two years, then hopefully this video will help you as I'm going to share some tips around making the move to full-time affiliate, as well as giving you some ideas on how to earn additional income without selling your soul. Hey there affiliate schoolers and welcome to this video. Now the first thing you need to realise and regular subscribers to the channel will probably have heard me say this before is that affiliate marketing takes time. Don't expect to be able to replace a full time income within 12 months. Think more 18 to 24 months before you can get anywhere near what a full time job is paying you currently. We also need to realize that the results are going to be different for everyone. So what I'm talking about today is not necessarily going to be typical results, but they are results that can be achieved. And it's fair to say as well that my first project failed big time. It failed pretty spectacularly actually. And it was not until my third and fourth project that I actually started to make really good money from affiliate marketing. Even when I made the jump, I didn't go full time affiliate. And here's something that might surprise you. I'm still not what I would deem a full time affiliate marketer. Although my affiliate earnings are greater than they ever were when I was working full time. Let me explain. I earn an online income from multiple sources. And although those sources have changed over the years, having multiple revenue streams is the smart way to play the game. And in many cases is the fastest route to working on your own terms. When I first started working for myself, I had taken on a couple of monthly retainers for SEO projects, essentially working as a freelancer. Now this gave me a decent amount of wiggle room if things went wrong. But I also had other projects going on too. I had some income coming in from various affiliate sites and I also had a membership site that was bringing in two or three hundred pounds a month. I ended up selling this site which gave me a good cash injection which gave me a little bit of a buffer when I started out on my own. So let's break down exactly how I made the jump into five simple steps. But before I do that, if you are looking to make the jump yourself and you're getting value from this video, then please bop that like button to let me know. The first step to self-employment, for me anyway, is to make sure you're covered financially. Now for me, this meant having a buffer of around four to five months worth of salary. So if everything did go completely wrong, then at least I had enough to cover me until I could find another job. When it comes to financials, you are of course also going to need to make sure that you've got enough money coming in on a monthly basis. Now I did this through freelance projects, and again, I made sure that I'd got enough money coming in to cover my expenses and a few nice things too. But you also need to think about things like pensions, other benefits that you might get from your employment and think about costing these in to make sure that in the long term, you're going to have enough money coming in to cover those things too. My second tip is to get involved in freelance work. However, not just any freelance work, try and choose project that match the skills that you're going to need as an affiliate marketer. So when I started out, I took on SEO projects, I took on writing projects, design based projects, all of these were skills that I now use on a daily basis as an affiliate marketer. And I was getting paid to learn whilst I kind of did the work. Now, of course, the caveat here is, you know, don't take on huge SEO projects if you haven't got a clue what you're doing. You need to have that basic knowledge in the first place. But if you have the knowledge and expertise to offer it as a freelance service, then it makes sense to do that. The payoff here, of course, is your time. And some people might argue that you're swapping one full-time job for another job, but 
you're going to learn whilst doing it if you choose projects such as those. But the difference is you're doing it on your own terms and you're working at times to suit you and you can work from pretty much wherever you like as long as you've got an internet connection. Now the best place to find freelance gigs, I found anyway, are places like Upwork and even Fiverr can earn you a decent supplemental income. I still offer SEO services today to my existing clients. I'm not taking on new clients at the moment because my focus is on affiliate as that side of the business has, has taken over really from, from the rest. And I want to be time rich rather than time poor and affiliate allows me to do that. But still having that extra revenue stream is really useful and just covers me in case there is some you know, crazy situation in the world of affiliate where it suddenly comes crashing down. My third tip is to consider going part time. You don't need to make the big huge jump that I did and go from a full time income to no income, which of course is pretty scary. If you work for a company that's prepared to let you drop down to say two or three days per week, then that's a good way to transition from full time employment, working for somebody else, to working for yourself. Now the second hardest part that I find is that transitional period from when you're starting to make money online to actually doing it full time but still being in employment. Now, that's really hard because you've got commitments on both sides. Obviously both take time and effort and mental energy and then you've still got family commitments and friends and social situations and all this stuff and it's really, really tough. And, and the question is how much do you commit to the projects that you're working on? And my advice here is to do as much as you can without it being detrimental to your physical or mental health. Now when I was in this stage, I found it really difficult and I probably spent about six months of working until one, two o'clock in the morning, almost every night, weekends and in the week, and then obviously in the week, getting up and going to work as well, as well as having two really young children. And this is not something that I would necessarily advise to anyone because to be quite honest, it took me pretty close to having a nervous breakdown because you're trying to do the best for everyone. So although I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, you do need to also realise that you'll get out what you put in. So just try and balance the two as best you can. And the fifth point is the hardest one, I think, and that is actually making the decision to leave. Like I said right at the start of this video, we all kind of dream of walking in to our employer and saying I quit, but actually taking that step is really difficult. Now I probably could have took this step myself personally, six months before I actually did. Now, if I hadn't left when I did, I might still be there and my life would look completely different today. My advice here is that you will probably know when the time is right, but still taking that step is tough. So if you think it is the right time, the chances are it probably is, as long as you've got all those other points one to four in check and you understand where you are and if things go wrong, you kind of have a little bit of a backup plan. The payoff if you get this right is so worth it. My day to day is so different now to what it used to be. I have more time with my kids. The time is my own. I work when I want to. I earn more money and I have a really good work life balance. And if you want to see what that looks like, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel because in a couple of weeks, I'll be putting out a video showing you a day in the life of an affiliate marketer. And hopefully that will motivate you to get to that stage yourself. In the meantime, if you want to maximize your earnings through affiliate marketing, then you need to watch this video next where I highlight seven of the best alternatives to Amazon Associates. Spoiler alert, they pay a lot more. Guys, thank you very much for watching and good luck with your projects.